What is going on guys and girls? Uh, Sinister here at Bad Company Gaming. Uh, we just hopped into a fresh match of uh, Conquest Large on Pearl Market in the um, shoot Dragon's Teeth DLC. Sorry, I'm thinking kind of slow. Woke up just a second ago and uh, I'm trying to hop right into the action and it's not going so well. Um, I, I don't want to tell you too much about the map, but I can tell you that so far this is uh, my least favorite of the three that I can play. I can't actually play um, the Sunken Dragon because my console will not load it. Uh, the game crashes every time about five seconds into the loading screen uh, and then sends me back to the home screen. So what I'm going to have to do um, is delete the game off my console and reinstall the DLC uh, and all that other nonsense that goes along with having to do a reinstall. But uh, I figured I would do some live commentaries on the three maps that I can play first uh, and then the real editing can begin. Uh, as, as far as doing some post rec post recorded commentaries, uh, it'll be a lot of fun. You know, I've had a lot of fun playing this DLC. Uh, not this map in particular. It just feels a little too uh, lackluster for objective-based gameplay. But we will see uh, how this match goes. Maybe this will be the one that changes my mind about this map. Some of the rooftops and some of the center areas of the map are just a little cluttered. Uh, and feel kind of like Metro, which I don't actually enjoy all that much. Uh, so for me, some of these side objectives where there are actually some long uh, lanes of fire are going to be probably the areas of the map that I'm going to stick to. But uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to try and move around the map and show you guys as much of it as I can. Um, not necessarily within the most effectiveness. I'm sure my uh, kill death ratio is going to suffer a little bit, but you know, if if it makes you guys uh, enjoy it to, to see the map a little bit more, you know that uh, I guess it's worth it to me. Um, you all you you will notice that I'm using a different gamer tag this time. Um, go gonna go ahead and explain that I've got two different uh, PlayStation Network accounts. This is my older one. Uh, I started a new one whenever I moved over to the new channel because I was getting tired of having nothing to unlock on this account. But uh, you know the game itself has just lost a lot of. Uh, enjoyment as far as I'm concerned so for me any it, you know right now in this in my position uh, it makes no sense for me to continue to play on the old one and try to unlock things I might as well just play with everything that I that I know well uh, on this account so they've moved the Amtrak up in here I don't have anything that I can do against that and I can't really shoot down from this particular rooftop because of this uh, annoying concrete on the side now I can shoot it out and then start shooting down there, but then that would sort of defeat the purpose of it being good visual cover for me. So I'm not going to do that right now anyway. I might here in a second. But as of uh, this second, um, I don't feel very threatened up here. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of leave it be for a second. That could change, though, in a really short matter because they did just get the objective. Uh, so they might start rushing up in here uh, fairly quick. We will see how that goes. Looks like they're mostly pushing for the other roof, or the other building, I should say. Um, not so much on this one, which is a good thing for me. Uh, I don't know that I would recommend it as a tactic for their team right now, because the position that I'm in, uh, they could pretty much come in here, wipe me out, and get up on the other rooftop. Uh, no problem, and then shoot across and wipe them out. But that's not what they're doing, so I'm just going to take advantage of them uh, not doing what, uh, what they probably should do try and make the best of it. I'm not getting squat for kills right now. I can't get out of this flag because of that Amtrak. Because I can't get close enough to it to see for it uh, as a man shoots me through a pole with a MPX. Uh, so, bonus points to him. He got a headshot. Which, you know, th that angle, I'm not sure how he pulled it off other than netcode. But, you know, a death is it really... Oh my gosh. Squad mate. What was that? <sighs> He's just chilling out next to the enemy. That was awesome. This here is that flag, I think, uh, that I was talking about. Yeah, I. I've had a lot of really bad firefights up here, and I uh, haven't really had a good firefight that felt like it was balanced at all. 
course, it could have just been the group of players I was with or something, but uh, the whole time it just felt really imbalanced and one-sided. Uh, it felt like whoever had the roof was just getting pounded from the outside and there was like no way to escape and pretty much no way to win the engagement. It seems like the error with bullets not registering is has returned and with a vengeance because I'm having a lot of dud bullets that like I'm point blank range shooting them, shooting them in the face. Like there's no way I could possibly miss and it just no damage at all. So uh, I'm not, not sure what's up with the netcode or whatever in this particular case, but it is definitely a problem. And it's not just me that's experiencing it. I've, I've talked to a lot of people about it, uh, and they're having some of the same problems with the DLC. So they've been running high rate of fire weapons to sort of compensate for that. This, this has always been one of the tactics that I've exercised um, when the game was having problem with hit, hit detection. Uh, really bad problems with hit detection. It always has, always will have problems with hit detection just, just because of the garbage netcode. But uh, whenever it was having really bad problems with it, I always ran with like the AEK or the FAMAS or something high rate of fire and kind of spammy. Uh, that way the game had a higher likeliness of actually landing enough shots to kill your opponent. So it would help you as long as you were able to control the weapons. You could still get it done. It just, it wasn't the most meritable of tactics, I guess. Um, there were d definitely different ways to work around it, but uh, that was just always what I had done, and I'm starting to think I might need to do that again. Only time will tell, though. Maybe it's just a uh, launch week type of thing. Maybe they already have a patch planned. You know, who knows? The, the CTE servers have been cruising right along, but yet the vanilla version of Battlefield 4 hasn't seen an update uh, with any of those changes yet, really. So, uh, other than the first big patch a while back, but. And we haven't gotten one in a couple months now, and it's getting a little bit late in the game, I think, to be slacking on release time. So if it's working in the CTE, you know, even if there's some little bugs to bang out as we go along, maybe it would just be easier to launch some of the big changes like the uh, triage uh, and the HUD fixes and things of that nature into the vanilla version and then worry about the bigger things later. Just give us a little bit of a tweak, and that'll keep the community uh, somewhat occupied for some time, I believe. So they're all down below us. I'm trying to decide who to engage first here. Even though I am playing support, I'm trying to conserve as much ammo as possible so I don't have to stop and ammo up as often. Uh, I, I don't run the ammo upgrade whenever, whenever I'm playing support because I have the support crate. That said, though, I, I do run the defensive upgrade, uh, f the field perks or whatever, field upgrades. That way I get that extra 10% of... Uh, damage resistance to the chest, so that is one thing that you definitely cannot put a price on is being able to take one more bullet to the chest at long range. It definitely makes a big difference, and uh, I cannot believe that they even thought it was a good idea to put that mechanic into the game, but you know what, I'll take it. Uh, it really feels like this perk's home is with the support class because the support players are usually up on the lines with the assault players, but they don't have the med kits. They're throwing down a ton of fire, but they're not doing a whole lot to protect themselves. So I think that the defensive perk tree definitely fits the support class best of all. Mowing down these guys in this alleyway as Jacob the Great Eleven goes down uh, in our team here. I'm thinking two or three enemies, maybe four. Shoot, maybe even five at this point because of the squad spawning. Now, right, and now they're on the other side again. It's amazing how that ha this map it, it flops sides so much. You gotta really pay attention to that mini map because they will come up right behind you, and you will never know it if you aren't paying attention. This right here, though, this is what I'm talking about with this loadout on the AK-5. You can kind of tap fire it at some longer range stuff, but the weapon just, it simply f floats. It, you really don't need to worry about tap firing all that much unless you're at, like, extreme distances. And then because of the heavy barrel, you can kind of stay on the trigger for ten bullets at a time sometimes and stay pretty darn accurate. So uh, I think it's a good, a good setup to run. I don't know if it's the best or whatever, but it's definitely one of my favorite uh, loadouts to run on the AK-5. We're going to climb up here to this rooftop, see if we can make a push on Charlie from above. I don't really like walking into these small courtyard flags uh, from the bottom. It just seems like a really bad tactical move. 
So we're going to try and swoop in, see what we can evaluate here. Let's see if we can get anything done. They're about to have the cap, but that's fine. I would like to, I would like to contest it, but I, I'm, it's only me. I can't change a whole lot as, uh, well, I thought it was going to be Mr. Pepsi, but it's MC Peppy. Uh, pulls off a nice move with the MTAR as we get some crazy graphical stuttering uh, as this is a DLC that just launched so there's always going to be little weird bugs like that there's some weird flickers in some of the terrain if you're running a sniper rifle it's worse uh, though in this DLC than it is in the rest of the maps it seems I've only done a little bit of sniping but uh, it does seem to be a lot more saturated uh, on this DLC how about that download size though I mean the rest of the DLCs were like four and a half gigabytes this one's tapping in at six and a half gigs that's that's pretty crazy. Uh, I'm not sure what's. I'm. Mean, you know, this map honestly probably is to blame for that. It's not necessarily that it's a particularly huge map. There's just a lot going on uh, as far as the terrain and then the you know the visual cover and the visual effects and whatnot, which is probably why uh, the graphics actually look the worst on this map, uh, for lack of better words. The rendering doesn't feel quite as crisp uh, on this one as it does on some of the other maps in Battlefield 4, at least on the PlayStation 4. I'm sure on PC there's nowhere even close to this problem, but uh, on the console, because as we know, they haven't quite figured out how to optimize uh, for PlayStation 4 that well yet. Uh, you know, you, you just gotta kind of roll with it and reduce the rendering on some of the different maps. I, I don't know about the Xbox One version either, uh, but considering that the console itself on Xbox One is run running a lower resolution, I'd say that they probably didn't have to reduce the rendering all that much to make uh, to make up for that. They probably just ran it at the native uh, 900p resolution instead of 1080 or something. Uh, th that would be definitely one workaround to take some of the stress off of the CPU. Maybe not the best solution, but it would get it done. Alright, so I went down just out here. That is an Amtrak and that is a Jeep crashing into an Amtrak want to say that there's a sniper down at the end of that road so I don't really want to stick my head out for too awful long as I know that they're making this flank back here anyway. Uh, I'm going to check for a spawn beacon. There probably isn't but I'm just going to go ahead and be sure that there isn't a spawn beacon over here in the corner or something because uh, I could totally risk that flag and right now my team cannot take uh, any more ticket bleed on us. We need to get on a flag we're on Bravo, we need to cap that because I believe that's them that's capturing Delta. Dang it, they're, they're on Alpha again. Holy heck. He gave me a bit of a jump. Alright. So they've taken over the Amtrak, according to that their mini-map. Um, definitely not a good thing if that's the case. That thing is like a mobile fortress. Those things can take so many RPGs and just kind of like shrug it off. It's a little bit annoying, but at the same time, I mean, on a map like this, it makes sense to have one point of refuge that you can move around and kind of make a mobile spawn point. So I don't blame the devs for bringing the Amtrak back on this particular map. It just, uh, I don't know, it feels a little out of place since it hasn't been in the game anywhere else, I guess. I don't know. They are behind me, but I don't want to backtrack towards Alpha. Uh, trying to keep an eye on my flanks here, but this is not working. As, uh, yeah, I, I figured he was right there, but I thought if I could get those two kills, you know, it would ultimately be a bit more worth it. As they were all going to shoot at me, so uh, it was just, just a matter of deciding who I wanted to kill first, I guess. As I get possibly one of the worst squad spines of all eternity. Uh, I definitely did not check the spawn screen long enough to gather that uh, he was in the middle of a head-to-head -head firefight. I thought it was a long-range one. I uh, should have paid a little bit more attention, but I was just feeling really anxious to get back into the action here. I think I've sort of found my niche for this map. I need to stick to the ground pounding. I need to stay off of the rooftops, because I, I, I can't get any, anything done on them. It's really clustered. All, all the blueberries want to funnel to the rooftops because of that sort of stereotypical feel that, you know, the high ground is always better or whatever, so everyone always sort of runs for the rooftops, and then you don't have anyone on the ground level, you just have a whole bunch of attacking forces and defensive forces forces that are focusing on those rooftops, 
and uh, that actually presents a lot of opportunity for me to make quite a few kills down here on the ground if I'm careful. I should have paid a little bit more attention and noticed that he moved to the right. I thought he stayed stationary with all the smoke and I didn't get that kill because of it. I'm using this tin foil basically as cover from this Amtrak. I cannot believe he's not blasting me with a grenade launcher. Trying to find a work of angles, but I'm not really having much luck. Maybe going for a wide swipe flank. That's a claymore. Would be the uh, the best option in this particular scenario. Like I, I just said, that I was going to try to stay off the rooftops, and I'm trying, believe me. But we need someone up here to take these guys out. And uh, as far as I know, I'm the nearest nearest guy to the flag or the objective in this case. Uh, so I tried to get it done, but 5150, which means he's Probably a gangsta uh, with his flat build cap. He was waiting for me with his Air 160, which is a decent rifle. Not my choice uh, if I was picking assault rifles, but you know, it's all right. It's adequate. It's perfectly adequate. It's 100% completely average in all categories. It doesn't do any one thing uh, any better than any other rifle. Uh, in fact, I think the 416 is a better. Uh, a better weapon at being completely average, if you know, if I'm honest. Ah, uh, squad mate, we could have made it in there, man. Then you quit sprinting, and I don't know why. Come on, guys. Keep keep the pace up. This is good. This is good. We're going to win this one if we keep it up this way. That's what we're here to do. We're here to win because Murica. Ah. Dang it. I wasn't even sure if I got the dude there in the corner because I got the grenade kill like at the same time. Ugh, freak. Whatever you do, Simba, do not shoot the rest of them. Shoot me twice. Please. I don't really want, I'm not going that way. Oh! Shouldn't have gone that way either, apparently. Uh, be terrible at the dang it <laughs> hung up on a friggin stool if you guys haven't noticed I strafe a lot to aim that was just something that I learned a long time ago and some habits die hard so when I get hung up on something really small and stupid like a stool and I can't strafe it totally messes my aim up because I try, to, I try to stay moving instead of just standing there like a sitting duck. Some would say I do too much strafing and shooting at the same time because it reduces my accuracy. But, you know, what the heck's the heavy barrel for, right? Yay, we won! And I'll tell you guys this, that was the first game on that map I've, I've played that I've actually even halfway enjoyed. It's so far actually been my least favorite of the maps, like I said. Uh, I haven't enjoyed a whole lot of playing it at all. Only 6th place, 6th place, which is 
once again not exactly the range that I'm used to but I will definitely take it 39 and 13 is not a horrible score uh, I could have done a little bit better I believe but you know take everything with a little bit of a grain of salt uh, so who knows maybe this will be my best score on that map ever because right now everyone's kind of trying to figure out their playstyle for it but anyway I hope that you guys have enjoyed this live gameplay commentary playing uh, Pearl Market on the Dragon's Teeth DLC for Battlefield 4 and I will catch you guys on the next one.